scientific mom. Well, that's the name I use when I'm writing about the awesome things my daughter Kat and I get to do together. My name's Amy Euler, and I'm a homeschool mom. So what is homeschool anyway? Well, for us, it usually means hanging out together, spending time at home while we're learning. But it also means that we get to spend a lot of time outside exploring. So we get to find things that really interest us and learn more about them. We get to experiment, make discoveries, and have fun. But sometimes we come across questions that rely on knowledge that I don't have. And when that happens, we look for the experts. Earlier this year, my daughter and I were hanging out in our front yard. And we were watching as all these bees were descending on our rosemary. She turns to me and asks, Mom, if the bees are getting nectar from our rosemary and taking it back to their hive, will their babies want rosemary too? I had no idea. <laughs> but whenever I say I don't know, Kat just looks at me and says, well, just Google it. <laughs> so I go to Reddit, which is a website featuring thousands of different online communities. I see some Redditors here tonight. So there I found a community of beekeepers who suggested that I look here in Phoenix and see if I can find a beekeeper who'd be willing to take us out for a day. A friend put me in touch with Dan Punch, and he did just that. He invited Kat and I to come hang out at his apiary, his bee farm, for a day of beekeeping. He even had extra suits, which meant that I was going to get to wear a bee suit. And I'd get to see my little girl dressed up in a tiny bee suit. <laughs> so we get down to the bee farm, and bees are buzzing around all over the place, and it's pretty crazy. Dan has this smoker, this tin can looking thing, and it's filled with pine needles that are lit on fire. See, as we go through the hives, the bees aren't exactly going to want us rummaging around through their stuff and taking their honey. So they're going to be sending out calls for backup for the other bees to come defend it. The smoke is going to block those calls and keep everything calm. So Dan's opening up the, the beehives, and he's pulling out these frames, and they're covered in bees. And he points out the queen bee, who's busy laying eggs throughout the colony. Now, this was really cool, because we got to see eggs, we got to see little white globs of larva, and we even got to see brand new baby bees as they hatched out of their cells for the first time. The workers would come up to them, and they'd wiggle their little antennae at each other as they greeted them into the hive. And it was so cool to see like the life cycle that you read about right in front of you, just happening right there. But there were some scary moments, too. I mean, we're opening beehives. Under any other circumstance, this isn't a good idea. So we're opening these hives, and bees are everywhere. They're all over my clothes. I'm looking at my daughter. She has bees crawling on her helmet, trying to find their way into her face. It was not cool. But for her, I was really impressed because she was really calm. She could have been freaking out. But instead, my eight-year-old sat there and went, Mom, I'm really scared. Are these bees going to sting me? And they didn't. You know, Thankfully, everything was OK. We had our bee suits. Dan had his smoker. He was able to calm the bees down to get back to work. Because that day, we were beekeepers. And we had a job to do. We were there to check on the health of the hive and make sure that the bees had enough food to get them through the end of winter. Considering the amount of bees that had come out, I'm pretty sure they were doing all right. But that brought us back to Kat's question. Do bees prefer rosemary if that's what they're taking back to the hive? Turns out, the answer is no. See, bees are going to get food from any flower they can find, and they're going to go a long way to get it. They're not picky, and if they were, well, they wouldn't last very long. But by the time we had our answer to Kat's question, our experiences in finding it had become way more important than the question itself. See, we learned that there are people in our communities, online and in our neighborhoods, who really want to reach out and share their knowledge with people. All we have to do is ask. So I mean, our questions since that day of beekeeping have taken us all over the place. We've been mechanics in garages. We've done dissections at the Science Center. We've hung out with hackers at a library. For us, learning is an adventure that never ends, and I can't wait to see where our questions take us next. Thank you.